All right, well, um, I wanted to talk today about how feng shui can actually help your health. So we're uh, kind of going along with the health theme here today. So um, a lot of people think that feng shui is mostly about rearranging the furniture or putting some object in a corner. Um, and I am here to tell you that that is not real classical feng shui. So what I do when, um, when I have a client is I am assessing the, uh, the living energy of the space and to, um, to really help match my client's um, goals with, with their environment in their home. Uh, since qi is a natural phenomena, it's, uh, it's really rarely about interior design or putting of man-made objects. So I'm looking at the natural environment of the place. Um, part of that assessment really comes and starts with, the, with my client's um, energy map themselves. So each person is born with what's called a destiny chart, um, and it's the first moment when they take the, their first breath. So I'm looking at their birth date and even the hour that they uh, were born. Um, so this, uh, then when I'm looking at their birth date, I can first of all give them what is called a Mingua number, and that determines kind of like their best direction. So there's best directions for success, and there's definitely one for health. And what I um, can advise my clients is that uh, based on their Mingua number, they have a particular direction that's good for their health um, when they're sleeping and when they're eating. So if, say, they were perhaps a number one Mingua, that would relate to water element and in the north, and their best direction for health would be the east. So they would align their bed so that the head of the bed would be um, pointing towards the east, or if they were sitting down to eat, they would be facing east. And this would be most important, say, especially if they were facing a health challenge. You would really want to give yourself support. But it's a good thing to remember just as you're, um, as you're going through, because um, a lot of people don't know when they're going to be coming up uh, to a challenging time. So that's number one. Um, as well, um, I am also looking at um, the kind of a forecasting uh, type of uh, situation with, with their four pillars. So what I did was um, I handed out this, this little chart here. First of all, we have um, two um, representations of cycles of energy and time. And the first one is the five elements. And you can see one kind of feeds into the next. Um, it also, there's a reverse where it um, kind of works against that. And there's um, arrows that go across, and those are controlling. Um, one controls the other. So really, basically, I'm just kind of showing you that, that, that there is um, kind of cycles of time, just as when you um, go through your life and you say, gee, you know, I feel kind of better at a certain time of day, or I have more energy, um, you know, yesterday than I did today. So just recognizing that you do have kind of ups and downs, and there are natural cycles to, um, to the earth. And then you have another representation of, of, um, of time and, um, and energy. And these are represented by the uh, this zodiacal signs, which really are just um, archetypal representations of energy. So for instance, um, we're in a tiger year. And the opposite of that is the monkey. So a tiger is kind of strategic thinking. And a monkey is kind of like uh, going uh, a lot of energy everywhere. So those are just kinds of, um, uh, you know, kind of examples. So today's four pillars chart, we're in a metal tiger year. The month is a dragon month. It's a metal dragon month. Today is an earth monkey day. And the hour, this uh, two hour period of time is a fire dragon. So what does this all mean? Well, um, when I'm looking at my client, I'm saying, well, what is their energy level or what is their potential for uh, an um, in this particular year, month, or day. Um, and you might think, oh, a metal tiger. Perhaps a metal tiger person is really going to be having a great year this year. It's their year. Maybe so, maybe not. It also depends on what else is in their chart. Um, for instance, tiger is represented by wood energy, and metal cuts uh, wood. So there are some, some real potential problems there. Mm -hmm. um, and then today, we have an Earth Monkey Day. And that is um, in direct opposition to the tiger energy. 
So there might a, a metal tiger person, or even uh, more a wood or water um, tiger person, might have a, a kind of a challenging time on a monkey day. So um, I'm looking at those uh, at the person's four pillars chart and the time um, of the you know the particular day in the year to really um, help my clients. Um, and so how does that really kind of work into the health? Well, if if I see that they're coming up on a, on a challenging period of time, then I will say, well, you really want to kind of pay attention and do some self-care. Maybe you want to uh, go get a checkup from Jamie, you know, with an acupuncture treatment, or get your spine adjusted. Um, maybe you want to pay attention that we're right now in springtime, which is all about liver releasing and making sure that your diet is um, supporting that kind of uh, work. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, also, um, uh, I can also advise my clients on uh, what kind of essential oils would be good for them to diffuse in their home to really build their health. So um, these are all kinds of uh, things that I'm looking at to help my clients. My specialty is date selection, so um, I'm, if somebody is really coming up on a, a kind of an acute situation, I can tell them, well, uh, if you have to have surgery, it's kind of important that the surgeon doesn't cut in the wrong place. So I would give them a day that wouldn't conflict with their, um, with their birth chart to um, give them the best uh, possible outcome of that surgery. So um, if you know of anyone who um, would like to you know, really bring out the potential in their life um, and really get the uh, best energy from this year, um, I would... Um, appreciate a referral to me that would be great and um, just to let you know that for anyone here I provide um, your Mingua numbers for free I, you know I mean your, uh, your best directions for free so um, I'm very happy to provide that to, to everyone here so um, if you have, have a goal in mind when um, when you're working with a feng shui professional that is the best because really I'm working with helping people to um, solve their problems and reach their goals so, does anybody have any questions? Okay. <laughs> okay, Vera. Uh, I don't see, like, another person. It's, I know it's about a uh, date, but uh, what does it mean, like, the water in the feng shui? Water um, has so many different meanings. Um, uh, it can be kind of like dream time. It kind of represents uh, the night time of energy. Um, it can also relate to wisdom. Um, so water feeds into the wood. The wood is the um, kind of the energy that moves out and is um, kind of moving through the day. So does that kind of answer that mm -hmm. for you? Okay. What is the feng shui of this room? Well, um, it's, uh, <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to say that this room per se is, um, is a little bit squashed. You know, we kind of have a long, narrow thing. but. Um, I think really what we're talking about is the energy of what we bring to it. Um, and fits at least like 70% of the feng shui of a space has to do with what is outside the building. So you want to be able to um, direct the energy, the good energy, to come into a building and to circulate so you have um, kind of constriction and expansion so that it, um, it makes the chi to move. Um, Throughout the throughout the cycle, and you also want to have space in the middle of the room uh, because that's called the tai chi, and you want that free. That also relates to health. So if you have rooms um, in your home, you want the center of the room to be fairly open. And is the, I'm sorry, just very quickly. So is there also an arrange? Do you deal with the arrangement of people within the room? In you other can. words, in other words, I think of of like yeah. the leaders down there. Mm, yes. And I think of last week yeah. when we yeah. had the leaders here. Yeah. And yeah. does that have an impact on the energy of, you know, that's circulating in the room you based upon get, who is the power people in the room? You can get kind of uh, the macro to the micro, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think that um, for me, I, I mean, I just feel that it's um, easier to speak to people. It's kind of like equidistant. So, mm -hmm. just for me, that's that feels kind of good rather than you know speaking down there to to the whole to the whole group. So, yeah, that's an interesting concept. Yeah. For me, I'm even.